They say there's a problem with Parramatta Road, Jesse. But here it is, 11.20. We're rolling along, 60 kilometres now. Can you see a problem? <laughs> I'll take that as a no. There is, of course, a problem with Parramatta Road, but only east of Strathfield and only in the peaks. This is part three of a series examining the West Connects motorway proposal. In part one, we saw that, under the impact of peak oil, Sydney's road traffic has virtually flatlined for nine years, while demand for public transport has risen relentlessly. In part two, we outlined public transport solutions to southwest Sydney traffic. We're now going to look at some real solutions to the problems the West Connects proposal purports to solve along the M4 Parramatta Road axis. Around 6,000 inbound vehicles, mostly single occupant cars, pass under Battle Bridge here in Lewisham in the morning two hour peak. If you remove just 2,000 of those vehicles, Parramatta Road would flow freely for those who need to be here. The essence of the problem is that it's nuts to waste 15 billion on a motorway just to cater for two or three thousand peak period motorists when that money could be giving us the comprehensive high capacity public transport system we're going to need in the energy poor future. And it could be getting heavy freight off the roads as well. So let's look at some public and active transport solutions for Sydney's east-west axis. This is the place where the railway line to Olympic Park passes over both the M4 motorway and Parramatta Road. And it's this spot where there was once a grimy little industrial station called Pipita that holds the key to a revolutionary way to get passengers from here right into Central Station in less than 20 minutes. How good is that? Here's how it would work. Trains would run from the Olympic Line platform at Lidcombe to Pipita then Olympic Park, then round the loop to Pipita, then express to Strathfield and Central, and back again in the reverse order. Even now, there's still enough capacity in the main western tracks to do this. The new Pipita City Express station would span the M4 and Parramatta Road. There's abundant space right next to the M4 for a park and ride for thousands of cars, a bus rail interchange, a childcare centre and some handy shopping. Inbound, the park and ride would be entered straight off the M4, outbound via Homebush Bay Drive. This scheme alone would strip thousands of cars from Parramatta Road east of Strathfield, particularly in the peaks. And for good measure, Parramatta Road light rail would have stops located right under the Pipita station. Parramatta Road Light Rail? That's the next part of the plan. We've already got thousands of cars off the road. So what can Light Rail do? Backers of the West Connects proposal sometimes say they're in favour of Light Rail along Parramatta Road but only in the distant future after they've spent 15 billion on West Connects. Why wait? With traffic virtually static for a decade and peak period public transport bursting at the seams, we can be sure that the extra speed, comfort and capacity of light rail will get thousands more bums out of car seats. Here's how to do it. The full inner west light rail will be up and running in a few months. Construction of George Street and South East Light Rail starts in 2014. Parramatta Road Light Rail can be pushed west from Central in a series of short stages progressively replacing buses which can then be retasked to providing frequent feeder services to the light rail. There'd also be strategically located park and rides, 
soaking traffic off the road. West of Strathfield, light rail would enter a zone where there's more industry, more rust built, and much potential for employment generation and new residential development. It's also the stretch of Parramatta Road with the lowest traffic volumes, so construction would be very easy. We'd suggest taking the line into Olympic Park, where it would serve the south side of the precinct and meet one of Parramatta Council's light rail proposals. And there's that connection with the Pipita City Express scheme we've already outlined. Now let's take a look at how light rail, existing, decided upon or proposed, is shaping up as a comprehensive system. To the inner west and southeast light rail and the Parramatta Road line, let's add the east-west translink we suggested in part two. But wait, there's more. There's the White Bay Greenlink. From the corner of the Western Distributor and Victoria Road, you can see the advantage of Ecotransit's White Bay Greenlink proposal. Using this disused rail easement, it would create a direct light rail and cycling link right into Barangaroo and the northern and central CBD. And it would also be the starting point for a light rail line running up Victoria Road. Here's how it would work. The White Bay Green Link would diverge from the inner west light rail at Lilyfield, follow the old freight rail corridor to just west of the cruise passenger terminal, and then proceed in a board tunnel to a Balmain stop under Gladstone Park, and then from East Balmain to Barangaroo in an immersed tube tunnel. It would then head east, under Wynyard and the northern CBD, to join the unused rail tunnels running from Macquarie Street to the Cenotaph. There'd be interchange with heavy rail at Wynyard, Martin Place, St James and Museum. The line would then surface to proceed along Oxford Street. At White Bay, Victoria Road light rail would join the Greenlink, bringing commuters directly into Barangaroo and the CBD. For a fraction of the cost of the northern arm of West Connects, we've now created a light rail orbital around the city's inner core and feeder routes that are guaranteed to significantly reduce traffic on the road network. We've also released hundreds of buses to increase cross-regional and feeder services in Western Sydney. OK, what's the bill? In an era of spiralling energy prices and declining car use, it makes absolutely no social or economic sense to indulge the megalomania of the road lobby with the biggest, costliest tollway scheme to date. Demand for public transport is rising relentlessly, and precisely because Sydney ciders can no longer afford to buy the volumes of fuel they were buying before. And now, the decline of the Aussie dollar is driving a new round of petrol price increases. The fact is, vast swathes of Sydney, particularly in the West, are being pushed into what's called petrol poverty. And there's no point building a fabulously expensive tollway system if the people who are supposed to help simply can't afford to use it. If you put the projects we've outlined here, Together with those we outlined in part two of this series, they total about $3 billion. And they're guaranteed to get traffic off our roads and satisfy much of the demand for public transport. And there's something like a third or a fifth of the cost of West Connex, depending on whose story about the cost of West Connex you believe. 
Thanks for listening. Please pass on the links to this series. If you subscribe to this channel, you'll be notified of new Ecotransit videos.